Hi guys, Debbie here from the Real Estate Agent Referral Network, and I'm joined today um, by Landon Brazil, and Landon is the owner of ZFind, and such a cool company. So Landon was telling me a story um, just before we started recording, and um, I, I thought it was so cool and so interesting, but, but Landon, first of all, Welcome to the to the group Thank and you. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. So um tell us a little bit about yourself and like what Z Find is and and how you got started and and that kind of stuff. For sure. I, I definitely appreciate you giving me this opportunity. You're doing amazing things. Um, you know, so just want to let you know that first. Thank uh, you. so so I'll I'll start before Z Find even happened. So I uh, went to school at the University of Cincinnati. That's where I graduated. I played college football there. I was more interested in business than football. Um, even if even if all my college coaches was watching this this call, they'd be like, "That's very true." Um, you know, and I was more I was just more so focused on business than football. I had a full scholarship. I made sure I did everything right. Um, made sure you know I had everything done the right way. Like, you know, I didn't disrespect anybody, but I just solely cared more about business than this, the, the game of football, because I knew that at some point football was going to end and I needed to, you know, have something next to do. And so in college, I would, you know, uh, like, like I used to sell shoes. So I had an eBay store. I was one of the highest rated eBay, eBay sellers for auctions. Um, and what I used to do is I would auction shoes on eBay and they were like the, you know, unreleased shoes or the shoes that, you know, nobody could get, things like that. And I would start at like $99 and they would go all the way up to like $1,000. And so in college, as a college athlete, I was making like $10,000 a week, but I had to do it. I had to do it quietly because as a college athlete, you're not allowed to make money. And so you know, that was the issue. So I had to be very, very secretive about it. But unfortunately, uh, you know, coaches did find out, compliance did find, find out outside of YouTube channel. Like they told me to shut my YouTube channel down or they would take all the revenue that would come from it. So I was like, I'm going to just chill out right now. I'm going to like, dude, I'm going to like focus on school. And I honestly, I don't regret it, but I wish I would have just stuck to what I was doing because Clearly, if the school wants to take something from you that's doing well, that means you are doing a good thing. Um, so if I would have just stuck with it, I probably would have seen even more success. But I cared so much about, you know, what my parents were thinking um, about my scholarship, not losing my scholarship, having to pay for school, like all these different things that kind of just kept me in the straight line of like, let me just graduate, get this over with and then get into the real world. I don't know. At ten thousand dollars a week, I bet you could have paid for school. No, I, I definitely could have, but I was, I was so, I was so concerned about what other people would think if I just dropped because I never, like, I always had, had aspirations to do business and things like that, but I never, I never thought about okay, I'm gonna just drop out because of this. Like, I don't. I, I, you know, I like I've been so used to seeing people work my entire life, but not in business. So I only knew the like the right, the traditional right things to do. I didn't know like the like non-traditional things like that. I just knew how to make money because I was so interested in business myself. But I wasn't I just wasn't I didn't think that if I did that, it would be a good risk. Like it, it, I saw it as a bad risk. Now, looking back. If I had kids, I'd be like, look, go ahead, do that. Go, just drop out, like, you know, do your thing. And, you know, if it doesn't work out, like, I'll support you because you took that, you took that jump, you know, to at least try to make something happen. So long story short, I graduated and I immediately knew that after I graduated college and got my very first job, I had never worked a job before at, at all. But once I got my first job, I knew for a fact that I needed to invest in real estate. So um, what I did was I got a job at Tesla. Tesla laid me off after two months. So I got, so I was like, I'm never, I'm never getting a, a job where I, like, if I get a job 
I'm at the mercy of what that job does. So I was like, I need to learn a skill. So I learned web development. I, I learned it in like two months. I only knew like 60% of it. I did a certification. I didn't pass the certification, but I instantly applied for jobs. And I ended up getting a job at a company that developed websites for car dealerships. So they flew me out to Vermont for training. I was super unqualified, but I still got the job because they liked my drive. They liked how passionate I was, what I was willing to do, learn, you know, ask questions. Like I was honest with them. I'm like, look, I just learned this, but I saw an opportunity. I wanted to take it. So they ended up not putting me at the at the best level for web development, but more like a digital marketer kind of. And I was getting $38,000 a year before taxes. So I wasn't getting paid a lot, but I was like, I don't really care about the job thing. I'm just trying to invest in real estate. So I saved up 23,000 of that $38,000 to invest in a duplex as a down payment in Dallas, took that money, invested, and I rented out one side for Airbnb and lived on the other side. So that was my start into the Airbnb, into the Airbnb world. Um, it gets pretty interesting because I also was running a digital marketing agency for realtors and I was helping them get connected with sellers. And so I was taking all my Airbnb income. Like I was getting a lot of money through Airbnb because it was just popping at the time. Like it was doing really, really well. And, uh, I was taking all that money and investing it into my agency to, for realtors. So I was like using it to run ads. I was using it to build a team, like all these different things. And at a certain point, I'm like, I cannot keep taking this money and putting it into a different business because I have to pay bills in this Airbnb business. So at the time, I also was working my job as well, but I wasn't getting paid that much like as it was. So it's not like it really did anything for me. So what I started doing was I started taking out loans to invest into my digital marketing agency. And I'll just say it didn't work out that well because I thought that the money would change everything and I wouldn't really have to increase my skills at certain things. Uh, so it didn't go as planned. But what I learned was I learned I need to hone in on certain skills and get better. Just keep getting better at, 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 at anything that I want to do. And eventually I will succeed and I will make money. So I learned my sales skills, everything like that. But long story short, I ended up in, I ended up taking out too many loans um, and I put myself in a position where I'll just fast forward like six months to where my credit was so bad that I could not um, I could not get approved for apartments when I wanted to do Airbnb. So uh, I, I skipped a whole lot. Um, I actually talk about this on my workshop like in full, but I put myself in a position where I could not get approved for uh, like leases for, for Airbnb to where I had to figure out how I could still scale my portfolio. And I did, I scaled it from two units to 15 units in six months by some of these things that I did. But I was like, I need to partner with people that also want to do Airbnb, or I need to partner with a property owner that may want to rent their property out, but they don't realize the money that they can make on Airbnb. So I can partner with them. So I don't have to apply for this lease uh, or applied so that they can see my credit. And instead I can show them my skill and how I can help them make money. So I would go directly after property owners that own mansions and big houses because they understood business. They understood like, look, you know, this guy is trying to make me money. I see what he's trying to do. Like, you know, I'm probably, I, I probably like when I was, you know, in my school days or when I was in my entrepreneur days, I took massive risks. This guy's probably trying to do the same thing. He has a plan. He has a blueprint. Let's go for it. So my very first deal like that was a property that had a pool and a basketball court. And we was doing $20,000 a month on Airbnb. It wasn't getting rented out that much, but we were just charging a lot. Like we were charging like $1,500 a night. And um, that property actually went viral because this kid on TikTok that did like TikTok videos, he recorded a video as if that property was his house. And so I saw it randomly just scrolling through the algorithm and saw it. And I made a video saying, don't believe everything that you see on TikTok. Like this guy is clearly lying. That's not his property. I think I was a little too mean, like in that video, but I was, I basically showed the keys, 
and took a tour through the entire property in a TikTok clip. Um, and that video just kind of blew up. So like from there, I just started getting a bunch of leads of people that was like, oh, I'm interested in doing what you're doing. I'm interested in learning how you do this, whatever. So I started coaching people. And when I was coaching people, I realized that no matter how good someone like is, sometimes it's just still hard for them to get a property because they are introverted. They don't know how to talk to these property owners. Uh, they stutter, like whatever the case may be. So I realized, I realized that since I can't get approved for leases as it is, and I am not so much interested in the Airbnb business, I'm more so in helping people. I'm going to just get properties for people solely. That's all I'm going to focus on. And so for me to get my start, I did have Airbnb students as coaching. But what I knew that would really take off is if I just help people completely for free. So I had helped 70 people completely for free until I turned this into a real business. And so I had helped 70 people get their first unit. I was giving units to friends. I would talk to property owners. I'd be like, look, I can take your whole building. Like it'll be like 10 units that were vacant. I'd be like, I can take your whole building, get it leased out by the end of the week. They're like, it's no way that you'll do that. Like this property has been sitting on, on Zillow and apartments.com for weeks. There's no way you'll get it leased out. And I mean, if you're offering something to somebody for free and it makes sense and it makes money, they're going to be, they're going to think it's too good to be true. But I was really, really being genuine about it. And these properties were just closed so fast because, you know, they knew that they didn't have to pay anything to me. And so sometimes I would be giving units away to friends and things like that for free. And they would just gift me units. They'd be like, look, thank you for being a good friend. I want to give you two of the units that you gave me five for. So it's like, I would grow my portfolio through just being genuine about what I was doing simply because I just needed to get testimonials so I could turn this into a real business. And then after that, that's when it pretty much took off. And I started offering it as a service where we would find someone's Airbnb for them. And then we would launch their Airbnb for them. And then we would manage their Airbnb for them. And I started realizing that people were more so interested in just finding the properties because some of them were Airbnb operators that didn't need the property to be launched for them or managed for them. So I'm like, this actually looks like a good market. Let me focus solely on finding properties for people. That was one of our services. We turned that service into a whole new company called ZFind. And, you know, the rest is history. Now we have a platform where all the properties on the platform are approved for Airbnb and property owners are uploading their properties to our platform every single day. That's so cool. So um, you told me a story right before we started about listing or leasing 40 units in one building in Florida in a week, right? Isn't that what yes. you said? Yep. Tell us about that. I mean, that's like crazy. Yeah. So uh, I'll give the building away. So the building is called Yotel Pad Miami. Um, basically, it was a brand new building and the developer of the building was looking to rent out their units to Airbnb. Now, because the building is actually a condo, most condos don't allow Airbnb because of HOA. But this, this developer in particular was okay with doing Airbnb because he could charge more for his units um, instead of charging less. So like a one bedroom at the property was like 3,500 or like a one bedroom that was bigger was like 4,000. But the properties were all furnished with like smart furniture, like the beds that fold down from the wall, like the desks that come out the walls, like those type of things. So it was very interesting. And so my team was already looking for properties. Like we, you know, I've, we're probably, we're probably talking to a thousand, 2000 property owners a week. Right. Wow. So we were, we were just pounding, we were pounding cold calling emails, things like that. And a realtor had reached out to us and said, Hey, um, like I have a building um, but I was actually referred to you guys from someone who has used you guys' program before. And your name looks familiar. I've seen it pop up a few times. I responded to you guys. I haven't heard anything back from anyone. So this is like my third time reaching out. So my team member was like, hey, Landon, like this realtor reached out to me. 
uh, they have this building in Miami. Uh, would you mind like taking a look at this? So at the time I was only dealing with deals that were over 10 units. Like I didn't want to deal with anything that was under 10 units because I would be flying to like Arizona or to Texas or to Ohio to take property owners out to lunch to just, you know, build a relationship with them and, you know, see what could come out of it. Right. Cause I was just trying to, to get their properties to our platform or get their properties so I could send it out in a blast email to everyone that, you know, signed up with us. And so I had, I, I, I was looking through the deal in Miami and I'm like, this is very interesting, but I'm like, these rents are so high. I have no idea who is going to, you know, take these properties. So I'm just thinking in my head, like I wouldn't pay 4,000 for a one bedroom. And so that was a limited belief that I was like, well, I'm, you know, it, it's not like, it's not about me. It's about other people and what they can afford and what they want. So what I did was, I found out everything about the about the lease, everything that you know they did, um, the insurances, things like that, the condo. Talked to the realtor, talked to the front office. They told me everything. It was so much stuff that's involved. Um, you know, the developer. It was just so much stuff that was involved because the condo. And then Miami alone has like, you know, the, you have to like you have to escrow, uh, you have to escrow rent. Like it, it's so much stuff that's involved with Miami. When it comes to leases, it was just a whole like I had to learn all that because when I'm talking to someone that's interested in the unit, they're going to ask me these same questions. So I can't be I can't be I can't be not knowledgeable about what's going on because we were charging a service to you. We were charging to use our service. So if someone at, at the time we were charging fifteen hundred per unit to find it or we were charging twenty five hundred to launch the unit. So. If someone's paying us twenty five hundred, they want to know every detail about the property. So I'm like, it's no way someone's gonna pay us twenty five hundred, and then they're gonna go and pay because in Florida you have to pay first month's rent, last month's rent, and security deposit. So they're paying twelve thousand um, dollars for a one bedroom, one bath, and the lease had to start immediately. Like it's not like they could wait, like things like that. So I'm like, it's no way it's gonna happen. So what I did is I just did. Blast promotion, blast marketing on my social media. I only had like 1,200 followers at the time um, on Instagram. I blasted it to our entire list, even the people that hadn't even worked with us yet. Like I just blasted it to everybody. And I even put it on Facebook and groups and things like that. And uh, slowly but surely, like people started being like, look, like I'm interested in this building. Like what's the details? I put everything in there. I, 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 like the thing that I I've noticed with a lot of property locators is they're not honest with everything because they need to make a sell. So like they won't share the address or they won't share all the details because they want someone to be curious enough to ask them more information so that they can tell them enough information to get the sell. So I realized that I can't do that. If they get the address, it's OK. If they go sign a lease then I know that they're a shady person. Like if they got the address from me and they went behind my back and signed the lease, they're just a shady person. That's, I mean, I'd rather not deal with that person than to deal with that person and build a relationship with that person and realize they're shady in the, in, you know, in the future. So I just realized I got to give people as much as possible. So um, we ended up closing that deal. Uh, and what happened was it was people that were, like it was a lot of entrepreneurs, like majority of them were entrepreneurs or people that had taken out loans and the deal just closed so fast because I was giving away all the information. Like I said, there's nobody in this industry that does property locating. You can go in these Facebook groups. They're not giving away the address for anything. Like they will not tell you the address unless you give them some form of payment. And so that's what, that's how I realized that the only way that I can get as many people as possible to trust me is if I give them like everything. Um, because at the end of the day, I mean, it's going to be honest people and it's going to be dishonest people. I really only care to work with the honest people. So I'll let everything happen to the dishonest people, karma, all that stuff. And I'll just deal with the honest people. And so I, it, 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 when I look back on it, it's not hard to close that many units in one week because people will trust you if you don't lie to them. And so, you know, it works out for us now. Um, we give all addresses away. 
unlimited properties and they bar they barely are paying anything and they're getting all that information. So they're like, I mean, why not? And so. So now you have a workshop uh, and a course that you teach every Sunday, right? And the, and the course is free. Yes. Um, they, they can come to your workshop for free on Sunday and learn how to do this rental arbitrage that you're talking about. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So every Sunday I'm teaching realtors how to uh, unlock real estate commissions through Airbnb leases without spending any money on marketing to grow their database and also to close deals. Um, this is a high demand industry. It's very possible. I've been doing it for years. I've taught people how to do it for years. Um, there's other people that have been doing it for years. So, you know, real estate agents are just missing out on, on commission. They're able to undercut the market because they can offer this for free to all these clients because they make their commission from the building and the property owner. So um, it just works out really well for realtors. Brokerages tell realtors that there's no money in leasing. And I completely understand that because with a regular lease, you're you're working with a client and then a year later, they don't need you until a year later, like until they are ready to buy a property or move again. So you're not going to deal with that client for a while. Corporate leases, if I get a unit today and my business starts making money and I want to expand my portfolio tomorrow or next week or next month, I'm going back to that same realtor to help me find a property in that same market. So I could be a realtor and working and work with a client that has came to me 10 times throughout the year and have 50 clients. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, that's, that's pretty amazing. So um, you, you're, we're going to put your contact information, how they would get a hold of you. Um, when we post this on Facebook, you'll, you'll put it down there and, and I'll put it up on YouTube and, and um, you'll comment with all of your contact information. Um, is there something easy that you can give us now that is the link to your workshop on um, Sundays? Yes. So all you're going to do is just type in this URL. It's going to be agents dot. So agents like real estate agents dot Z fine. So Z I dash F I N D find dot com slash free and so that's the link to the workshop uh to register and that's all they need excellent excellent well i'm so excited this is this could be really cool there's so many agents out there that are struggling and um this could be a great little niche for them to um really plug into and be able to make some money quickly Mm -hmm. and um you know turn that around it, it the, the market is a little bit you know unknown right now so um having something like this that they can plug into and and make some money pretty quickly is really a cool thing yeah and the last thing i want to give you the the cool part about this is it, it doesn't interfere with their real estate license and on top of that the clients that they get through rental arbitrage they eventually will make enough money to go buy a property or they may have properties already that they need to sell. Like I'm a real estate investor myself. I do rental arbitrage. If I, if, if a realtor got me a rental arbitrage property in a specific city, I'm gonna be like, Hey, look, my Airbnbs are doing really well. I'm tired of paying these property owners rent every, you know, every month. Do you know of any properties that I can invest in? You know, and because I've worked with this realtor for so long, I trust this realtor. So, you know, it 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 it, it helps with the buy and sell process. Um, and these 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 leases could take a week to close, so you're not waiting 30 days. Right, right, yeah. That's a really quick turnaround time. That's why I say they can they can make some quick money um doing something that um that applies to their license but doesn't require right. um yeah yeah love it love it love it okay well thank you so much brandon for hanging out with me today and for sharing all of this uh, knowledge that you have about um rental arbitrage and really helping our members find another way to add another income stream to their business 
Yeah, I truly appreciate it. You're doing an amazing job, for an amazing group. Um, you know, I don't have anything negative to say. So I, I truly appreciate everything that you're doing for the community and continue to, you know, serve everyone the way you're doing it. Thank you so much, Brandon. All right.